So we just like some calls like. So this is where the build up for fish would be just here. Oh, So this will be where we're staying tonight, just down there, it's a beautiful place. So that's the uh, campsite there. So there are all the flowers, beautiful draping mistletoe from up there on the branch. And this is a symbiotic relationship between the mistletoe bird and the mistletoe. So the bird gets food off, off these when they're ripe and then plants them again. So they're like farmers. Beautiful, beautiful uh, plants. So these are the beautiful flowers here. And they're all along here. And a bird um, plants these on the trees and they mimic the trees, whatever tree they put them on. And they droop down in a bunch. So there they all are, clusters of red flowers flowing in the wind. And this is a symbiotic relationship between the bird and the parasite. So the, the parasite needs the um, G'day, this is Bluey, and we're at Waddle Flat at the Field Study Centre at Waddle Flat. This is um, Professor Paul, Professor Paul, Dr. Uh, Dan. Dr. Dan, and the Madman. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just here today. We're going to go on a um, bit of a field trip, walk around in the bush, and show you guys what's at Waddle Flat. So, uh, come for the ride. Welcome to Waddle Flat. This is the the Centre of Study Excellence.
This is um, lunch, baked beans, sloppy sandwiches. That's that can be the name of it, eh? Baked beans, sloppy sandwich. Gourmet baked beans, sloppy sandwich. <laughs> Oh, that gets that gets cut out. But anyway, <laughs> Paul, the uh, apprentice chef. So this is a uh, uh, little big lunch. Bit of eggs and fresh eggs from home, onions, baked beans, free range eggs. Uh, baked beans, Heinz, sponsored by Heinz, and onions from the corner shop. So this here is the funnel web. So he lives in his funnel web here, and this is one of the, or well, the most venomous spider in the world. And they live in a funnel like this. So this is one that you've got to be careful when you go camping. Or you zip up your tent. Because if you get a bite from one of these, it can be very nasty. There's the fangs there. So just be careful when you're out in the bush that you don't meet this guy. And they're everywhere. Down Waddle Flat. There he is there. So this is uh, some of the equipment on Blue in the Bush that we use behind the scenes some trail cams find out what's in the area so this will get checked later on in a month or so find out what species live at Wattle Flat so this is Dan just setting up the uh, trail cam attempting to set up a trail cam been used for a so just getting put up on the tree and these get sent, uh, picked up by movement, sensor movement, tells uh, moon phases and dates and temperatures, so good for science. That's a bit of disguise. I love their, how their tongue flickers. The last time I seen one was at Canberra. Oh, right. And he was probably more blacker than this one. Uh, blue in the bush here, and this is the shingleback, the Australian shingleback, and he's um, very close related to the uh, blue tongue. They can actually cross with some of the Western blue tongue forms, so he's very closely related. And uh, he's got um, a fat tail, and he uses it like a camel. As a, the same as a camel uses its hump, and when the tough times are on, he draws in all the food from the tail, and uh, yeah, he's got a bit of extra um, rations for a while when times are tough. And uh, this is their defence when someone comes, you know, when a bird comes up close or whatever, and 
tries to eat him. And also, his tail looks like a head, so the bird doesn't know which way to go, and then when they go on his head, or on his tail, wacky might bite him there, but yeah, enough to scare him away. And uh, these are the only monogamous li lizards known so far in Australia and possibly in the world at the moment where they'll only have one partner for life and breed every year with that same partner. So they'll find the partner every year, follow them around, breeding, and then they will have usually two live babies, but they can have up to four, but usually two or one, which will be the size, of a bit under half the size of the parent. And they're ready to go to eat and fend for themselves and eat uh, snails and slugs and uh, some different flowers um, and then um, the, the, the other name the, they've got a few names so one's a pine cone lizard because it looks like a pine cone obviously and a bog eye looks a bit like a bog <laughs> looks a bit like a bog and uh, the shingle back because uh, houses used to have shingles. So each scale looks love their, is how in the same way as a shingle on a house. So they call them shingle backs. And very the last I seen one was a camp. One of my favourites out, out the bush. He's out here early in the morning. We're at Waddle Flat and a beautiful Aussie lizard. They'll, he'll, he'll do a pretty hard bite, but yeah, he's not that dangerous. As you can see, he looks like he's a bit of a pine cone. All the scales. And the scales, they're made out of uh, what your nails and hair are made out of. Um, keratin. Yeah, so, and they reckon that these lizards can live to a very old age, up to 50 years old. So that's quite old for a reptile. And these guys can uh, live in the deserts. So at the moment, we're at Waddle Flat. So, you know, um, not 40 minutes from uh, Baffers probably, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, a beautiful lizard. Get out in the bush and see these guys and enjoy them. Have a look at them and then leave them alone. on the head. Beautiful bird. Yeah, 
There they are, pruning themselves. There you've got the black head, lots of white on the wings and on the chest. So not quite an albino, but yeah, lots of white feathers. So this is the resident pied magpie. So he's very high in white, losing a lot of his black pigment. Beautiful magpie. That's a far or near. We're not. We're five k kilometres from Safari. Here's a mother and a baby. The second biggest marsupial in the world, these species are. And they are very fast breeding animals. She's probably just, here we go, great way, efficient way of moving, hopping. Here's the mother and Joey. She's probably just let out of the pouch, ready for the next lot of babies. Because they constantly have babies. They're like baby machines. And they're out here, checking to see if I'm dangerous or not. He's moving. Sonar dishes. Very cute. So here's a male piece and grunt. Check him out. So these are the second biggest marsupial in the world. Very big animal. And the second largest So he's uh, the boss of this mob. He's a bit concerned. Got his ears up, trying to listen. Side isn't that good in the daytime, so they usually rely on birds for alarm calls. So off we go to the next stop. Beautiful crimson rosella. So it's eating blackberries. Some on um, rock and blackberry. Beautiful crimson rose on juvenile just changing colour. Amazing, beautiful parrot in Safala. Is it
He's, he's male. See the gland? We did a spotlight before we went to sleep. Claws too, isn't he? On the underside. See? See on the underside of the claw? That sort yeah. of greeny blue. Any eggs on that one? Nah, it's not really breeding. See? So they think. mustn't be breeding size. Nah, it's not really breeding um, season, but it's more like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Very 
hairy, probably a female. Very white tail. And there's another one. There's the male, darker one. Just listening out there, right, so it's not that good. So I hope you liked this trip down Wattle Flat. That's the beautiful bush around here. Beautiful mistletoe, mistletoe bird. We've seen a few species of uh, skinks, pre-toed skinks, um, garden skinks, and the awesome shingleback and second largest macropod in the world and there would been there's been hundreds and thousands of butterflies in the grass here which I'll film when when we're walking back to camp and uh, Turon River beautiful near Safala and um, yeah hope you get out in the bush and enjoy it like I have See you soon. And not only that, I forgot to mention, this place is full of gang gang cockatoos. And they are now considered endangered in Australia. So this is um, prime habitat. Uh, it should be uh, looked after for um, the endangered animals.